Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Beautiful Wednesday morning, March the 10th, 2021. Glad that you could join me for devotions. We're continuing our series on the parables of Jesus Christ. And today we've come to a parable uh, called the parable of the new cloth and the old garment. And that's uh, found in Mark chapter 2, 20 to 21. So this is what Jesus said to his disciples. He says, No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth onto an old garment. Otherwise, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. So when Jesus was speaking to the people in this parable, um, he was preparing them for introduction of a new covenant. And Jesus came to introduce something new to the people. Um, He was not there to patch up something old. Now, this is what salvation is all about. It's uh, a new covenant. Um, Some types of cloth, uh, for example, um, shrink after they're uh, washed and dried the first time. So you wouldn't take an unshrunk piece of cloth and patch it onto an old garment that's already expanded and no longer has any flexibility in it. So this is what Jesus was saying with what he was bringing into Israel and the world at that time was that he was going to be introducing something new because the old system could not contain what he had uh, offered. And, um, you know, the, there's some lessons in this where the Jewish people at that time were thinking, well, maybe Jesus has just come to put a patch on the broken system. Well, no, Jesus came actually to reformat the whole system as the fulfillment of the law. So um, the new wineskin would be the new covenant system, the new covenant uh, structures, the way that things would be done. And they'd have to be new to contain the new wine. So that's what Jesus was was speaking about when he was talking in this parable here. Now, the the principles are universal, uh, I think, when it comes to uh, old cloth and new patches and um, new wineskins and new wine. When you consider what Jesus has done for us, uh, his, his work is new. And it's new every morning. The gospel is alive. And the gospel is constantly expanding and, 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 and changing us. And, uh, you know, on, on, a, on a certain level, uh, we need to pray that the Lord would help us to be flexible in, um, in being open to growth. And sometimes, you know, being old... The older we get, the more inflexible we get. I know my body, I mean, for instance, you know, where I used to be very flexible, you know, now that I'm in my 50s, I'm no longer so flexible. I'm, I'm kind of rigid. And the only way that I can become flexible, again, is by continually stretching. But if I'm just content to stay put and I, I'm not active, um, you know, it's like I get rigid. So I need to constantly stretch. Well, spiritually speaking, we need to always be stretching and and growing because the gospel inside of us is new wine and it never gets old. It's always new and it's always needing to stretch us and expand us. And uh, so for that to happen, I have to be flexible and I may need to change my approaches from time to time for that flexibility uh, to to be exercised. Um, now, there's been a lot of trouble in churches because people get comfortable and they want the same thing all the time. Well, if we just want the same, we're not going to grow. So we need to be open to being flexible and 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 praying this prayer: "Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever new. Change my heart, O oh God." make it be like you. You know, you are the potter, I am the clay. And, you know, the, there will come a day when the clay vessel is complete 
and, uh, and then we're going to be hardened into that completeness when we get to eternity and Jesus finally um, completes all things, right? Where all things are, are made new and, and we're given new bodies, and imperishable bodies, and it'll be set where there's not going to be any need for spiritual growth because we're going to be perfect in Christ. We're going to know him, we're going to see him face to face, and we're going to be given the reward of the race that we're running right now. But as we are here in this body on the earth, we're like a lump of clay on the potter's wheel, and he's constantly forming us and, and conforming us to his will. And um, anytime, <laughs> anytime we find ourselves getting rigid, God has to stop the process, pull out that hardness, crunch it back down and start over again. So we're constantly being formed in this life. Spiritual growth, that's what this is all about. Lord, help us as we age to be flexible. Um, we have to become all things to all people that we might win some. Paul understood this principle. And, um, you know, this principle is he understood that there was new wine inside of him that needed to be dispersed out there. And he had to be willing to, I guess, have new wineskins, constantly new wineskins for every circumstance that he was taking his message into. He, he had to be flexible. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 19 to 23, Paul said this, Though I am free of obligation to anyone, I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. See, Paul was all about the gospel, the gospel being the new wine. He, it was not about him. It was not about his comfort level. It was not about his systems that he preferred. It was about what was best for the culture that he was in. Um, to the Jews, I become like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I become like one under the law. Although myself, I am not under the law to win those under the law. To those without the law, I become like one without the law. Although I am not outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ. To win those without the law. To the weak I become weak. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. And then here it is. Here's the clincher right here. He says, I do this for the sake of what? Myself? No. He does this for the sake of the gospel. I do all these things for the sake of the gospel so that I might share in its blessings. Well, what are the blessings? The blessings are people coming to Christ. So we have to be flexible. For the young, if we're going to minister to the old, we have to be flexible. We have to talk to them in a language they understand. Our system has to be flexible. We have to be willing to do that. To the old, you know, you have to be flexible to the young generation. You know, you're not going to reach the children of this generation with puppet shows and, uh, you know, old songs. It's just not going to work. They're in an electronic generation and that's the language they understand and we have to speak to them according to where they are at. So to all things I become all men that I may win some. You see the flexibility of this? Flexibility within myself to, to, uh, to be sensitive. Because it's all about the new wine within me uh, going, being poured out into the world, right? Uh, the Lord pours his new wine in me so that I pour out to the world. So this new wine needs to have new wine skins. Um, to be contained in and, and handed off in, right? Uh, I don't know how else I can explain this, but if we try to maintain rigidity in the way that it's always been done with our system, okay, then it's going to rupture. It's not going to be good. If we try to sew new cloth onto an old wineskin, it's just going to tear free. If we try to put new wine into the old wineskin, it's going to go boom, it's going to burst, it's not going to do well. This is why churches die. This is why churches don't flourish, because people have become inflexible in their presentation of the gospel to the various groups that they're trying to reach. Um, yeah, if we're trying to reach the people in, in, in the rest home, we're not going to go there with a contemporary approach. It's not going to work. Uh, we have to be flexible and be willing to put down our way, our system, for the sake of the gospel, just like Paul is saying here. So if I'm going to reach seniors, I have to speak to seniors in a way they can relate to. If I'm going to speak to middle-aged family people, I have to be willing to speak to them in a way that they're 
uh, they understand and not changing the message. You see, the message, regardless of generations, regardless of history, is always the same. It's always new wine. It's always new. It's always growing. And in my own life, devotionally, I need to ask God, help me not to be hardened in my path so that I'm not willing to learn anything more. Because I need to learn. Until I see Jesus face to face and we're technically, you know, the, the pot is finished and then it's dried and set. Okay, We're in this constant state of flux. We don't want to be prematurely set in our ways. Uh, we need to be willing to be flexible so that we can, by all means, uh, see others come to Christ for the sake of the gospel that we might also share in its blessings. Well, a lot of food for thought here this morning. Just wanted to share those things with you. I pray that you would have a wonderful day. God bless.